So guys, we are going into our first Regulation H based video. This is also my first VGC video, so I hope you do and like it. So we're going to go straight into Regulation H and discuss pretty much the rogue picks I have for the Regulation, as these are some Pokemon I think haven't been fully either utilized, discussed, or haven't been um, shown in any team compositions as of yet. Regulation H hasn't started yet, but it's going to be very soon. So people are been team building. And also for those who are new to maybe VGC, I do actually think Regulation H is a good time if you have Scarlet and Violet to actually try out Pokemon um, competitively for VGC just because you don't have the immense like uber presence. You don't have the um, constant problems of like the other legendary Pokemon that happen to be, you know, like not the box legendaries. <coughs> So a lot of Pokemon are able to actually take advantage of this gap in um, representation and actually take advantage and play very uniquely. So I'm um, so just going to jump into it. So obviously for the rogue picks, these are Pokemon that are going to be under focused or maybe just people haven't thought about using them yet. But I have a good mix of five and I have some honorable mentions. But let's talk about what I think is a good rogue Pokemon. So obviously it's going to have to be able to do well into, I think, the solid um, cores of the game. So like you have your grass fire water cores, you have your, um, was it like the um, fairy tail core, which is like steel, fairy, and dragon. So you have access to that as well. You need to be able to have these Pokemon do well into different team compositions, whether it's sun, weather related teams, um, sandstorm, you know, hail or snow. Uh, basically, you need to have these rogue Pokemon be able to do um, either fit onto these teams, disrupt these teams, or add a new layer to the metagame that will allow them to be competitive and also beat some of the best Pokemon in the game. So we're going to start off with five of them, and my first pick is one that returns from Generation 8 as a good um, Pokemon, and that's going to be Dusclops. Dusclops returns as a very interesting Pokemon because of what it offers to a lot of teams. First and foremost, when we look at its stats, it doesn't have the greatest stats ever at 455, and most of its stats are based in its defenses. And another thing that will probably get people's mind is why would Dusclops be chosen over its counterpart in evolution in dust noir dust noir comes in here at 525 having a better attack stat as well as refining out its um special defense and um defense with about five more evs so you're probably wondering why on earth would you choose this um not choose this and go for dust clubs well there is something in vgc is important and that's items and when your pokemon holds items it makes them insane and for dust clubs it holds the eviolite which boosts its defenses because it is a pokemon that can still evolve this turns dust clubs into a superior defensive line than say like a dust noir can offer and it makes dust clubs a very interesting pokemon on a lot of teams Starting off with what it can do, we also have a few archetypes it fits on. So first, obviously, it is a Trick Room Pokemon usually and almost exclusively. The reason that it's a Trick Room Pokemon is that it sets it itself, but also does very well because Dusclops is a extremely slow Pokemon. Trick Room is uh, almost a mandatory, in my opinion, on the Pokemon just as a way to get it enabled to just be really, really fast and punish faster Pokemon, which most of the metagame will be faster than Dusclops. Additionally, it is a very good support Pokemon and disruption Pokemon, packing a lot of moves that can help um, allies like Ally Switch, but also being able to disrupt opponents in the case of something like Will-O-Wisp that we'll talk about in a second when we look at the moves. So a theoretical move sheet here for the Dusclops is going to be something like Will-O-Wisp, Nightshade, and Trick Room as the main moves. These three just guarantee damage in the case of Nightshade. Will-O-Wisp allows Dusclops to just hurt physical attackers and really punish them and keep um, other Pokemon that maybe aren't physical attackers get burned and kind of really slow down the game because Dusclops can stick around for a long time if done correctly and trick room is obviously here because it enables trick room strategies really well being a ghost type so it's immune to like fake out and stuff like that but additionally we also have like an extra space on the bottom this could be reserved for something like pain split which is a common move on dusclops you can use a lot of different moves to uh, effectively make Dusclops just a very powerful Pokemon and ultimately allow it to compete against um, other meta threats and be a very good disruptive Pokemon, which allows it to be a good rogue option. And we look at its matchups into the different cores, specifically in the Grass Fire Water Core matchup um, with the more uh, focused Pokemon of the metagame between something like Gyarados and Rillaboom, I think Dusclops has a very good matchup, specifically the fact that most Gyaradoses are physical as well as Rillaboom almost being exclusively physical attackers. Um, 
Will-O-Wisp immediately just means they're burned. Fake-Out is um, unable to touch Dusclops in the case of Rillaboom. And um, Gyarados doesn't really have any way to damage um, Dusclops effectively without boosts. It can maybe try to get flinches off a waterfall, but you're not really trying to bank on that. So this is an option too in order to uh, basically keep Pokemon opponents, Pokemon pinned down by Dusclops and allow it to enable its partner Pokemon just to do a lot more. Incineroar does have a good matchup into Dusclops just based on the fact that it is a fire dark type so it's immune to Will-O-Wisp dark type wise it's immune to um, certain other interest situations but for the most part it's not really based on that it's more so that Incineroar is a slow Pokemon so Trick Room kind of enables it too you can use Pain Split and Nightshade as your way to damage Incineroar but you know that just means Incineroar has more time to kind of mess with your partner Pokemon. So we move into our next option. We have a Relic, and that's Bronzong. Bronzong is a fantastic Pokemon, I think, because it has a lot of niche abilities, but also teaches players really well how you can build uh, a Pokemon to actually fit a lot of different niches based on their abilities. So we look at their stat total here for Bronzong. It has a 500 base stat total, with almost all of its best stats being centralized in its defenses, which inherently is good, similar to Dusclops, but... Bronzong uses the defenses in different ways. Starting off with its best um, options, which you can do with it. It has access to Trick Room itself, but also fits extremely well on Trick Room because it has an extremely low speed, similar to Dusclops. Um, it offers uh, some good support um, moves, as well as being able to use all the weather moves if you choose to put a weather a move on this Pokemon. It offers some good disruption, has access to moves like Hypnosis and Prison, stuff like that that does allow your Pokemon to um, additionally benefit by having it on the team. When we look at the move pull that I have here for it, or at least specifically the moves I would set on it, Iron Defense Body Press is almost a mandatory on this Pokemon. I don't think it's necessarily guaranteed, but you would want to use it because Bronzong is just an absolutely insane Pokemon because it already has a good defense. So one Iron Defense gets it really high, and Body Press just really does do a number on a lot of Pokemon. Trick Room is also here just because you can enable this Pokemon if you want to by allowing itself to set Trick Room for itself or vice versa, setting Trick Room for other partners. It is an option on on a Bronzong and it can be switched out for any of the weather moves if so chosen and then the final slot can be whatever you want you have a lot of coverage moves you have access to things like flash cannon you also have gyro ball you have access to a few other moves as well that you might want to place on Bronzong and what makes Bronzong really good is its um, differences that allows it to be fending on different teams and also against certain ma matchups so also one of the benefits is being a steel type in psychic it can fit really well onto sand teams which for the most part outside of the sand rushers are really slow so trick room on a sand team could be useful here with bronzong as it, as it won't take damage from the sandstorm so it does have that benefit here and into its matchups against the normal cores against incineroar and rillaboom they're usually 50 50 matchups for different reasons now the way that you design your bronzong is the case here because if you give it something that levitate it will be immune to different ground moves whereas for if you give it heat proof it can be resisted against a lot of fire moves coming out of incineroar possibly now they can cover for this by going after bronzong with like bug moves in the case of u-turn or dark moves in the case of knockoff but bronzong's extremely high defense does allow it to take these attacks pretty well and it does make it pretty hard for these matchups as they can go back and forth in both ways finally with gyarados it has a solid matchup into gyarados just because gyarados is usually always going to outspeed it so a trick room would really disrupt the gyarados's ability to do um more damage output also being a disruptive pokemon gyarados may not want to like paralyze it with like thunder wave or something based on the fact that bronzong will now be slow under trick room and guarantees it to move first no matter what this also means that bronzong just is very solid against water types and as you can tell this is one of the reasons why it's really good against gyarados moving into our next um, pick we have Gothitel. So Gothitel is an interesting Pokemon because it's um, very different than like the other Pokemon I mentioned so far. There are a lot of psychic types on this um, specific this specific video and list, but it doesn't mean that these are exclusively good. It just means that the psychic type Pokemon I think have a lot of um, misrepresentation yet that they need to start seeing on teams because a lot of them are actually very good. It just depends on how you want to filter them in. So Gothitelle is one of these Pokemon that has um, pretty okay stats, but it's not really used for its stats. It's more used for what the Pokemon offers in its move pull as well as its ability. So it actually offers some good support moves like Helping Hand, but the main focus you want to use on this Pokemon is trapping and stalling with disruption. So these three main core factors allows Gothitelle to fit on a lot of interesting teams. First, being a trapper with Shadow Tag, it's able to keep Pokemon stuck on the field. So if you partner this thing with a very aggressive Pokemon with like um, a very aggressive attacks, 
it can effectively use those moves to pick off these Pokemon that maybe want to switch out, which is why you would use Shadow Tag. Um, its ability to stall is more so with like Protect and also using uh, different moves to kind of draw out the battle with a specific team composition in the form of like Perish Song or Perish Trap for those people who know the team. And that's why Gothitel does that. And then Disruption is basically with like Thunder Wave and some of the other moves that it does run like Taunt. This Pokemon is basically meant to mess up teams um, while also keeping them trapped on the field and allowing the partner Pokemon to pick them off or allowing the Perish Song to drop to zero and take out the two Pokemon. Now, when we look at its moves that I have here, theoretically, there are some good ones. Foul Play is just here because it does solid damage and then against physical attackers, it really punishes them for being really strong. So this is why Gothitelle used it because it doesn't have the best defense stat. Also, Fake Out and Thunder Wave being here as well are very interesting moves for two reasons. Fake Out is here because it just allows you priority, but Thunder Wave is here to basically force Pokemon to be slower. Now, the reason I have it sla um, divided between the two is that Fake Out is an egg move, so if you're not comfortable with doing egg moves on Pokemon, um, you might as well just go ahead and go for Thunder Wave. It still does a very similar function. The only difference is Fake Out stops a move, whereas Thunder Wave can keep the speed down for the rest of the game from a Pokemon by paralyzing it, so it is up to you. Now, also, Taunt and Protect are here for two reasons. Taunt is here to punish slower support Pokemon, something like an Amoongus, maybe, um, to keep them from using different moves. You could also Taunt something like a Pelipper that might have, like, Wide Guard in case you want to use a Pokemon that has, like, spread moves. And then Protect is here because you really want to keep Gothitelle on the field. Its best um, trait is the Shadow Tag, so you don't want it to go away. And ultimately, this is kind of why... Um, you look at something like Gothitelle, it's just really powerful in the aspect because it just basically uses a support mon that has a niche ability that allows your other Pokemon to take advantage and allows you to build around that strategy. So sometimes you want to keep Pokemon stuck on the field. When we look at the core matchups, I think the difference here is that Gothitelle isn't an aggressive Pokemon. It doesn't really have options to be too aggressive. So its matchups are usually not the best against Pokemon that are neutral to it to some degree. But it does it is able to kind of deal with all of the meta Pokemon that I have in the core group a little well because it does have moves to kind of punish them or stop them through the case of like using taunt on some of these pokemon so they can't use other moves to either escape or leave um they have to be stuck with attacks and then protect to keep itself safe so these other pokemon that attack into it are just unable to get rid of gothitelle so they have to stay trapped on the field and allows the partner pokemon to pick them off like i said before this is kind of one of the reasons that i think gothitelle is just really really strong um against gyarados specifically it does okay gyarados can beat it um because gothitelle isn't the best defensively but Gothitelle also was able to just pin it down very similar to the others the only problem is just like um, with Bronzong uh, Gothitelle is not immune to fake out so you have to be careful so you know you do have to deal with that issue Moving into its counterpart from Unova, we actually have Reuniclus here. Reuniclus is an interesting Pokemon because it has a very good stat distribution um, in different ways. So its special attack is 125 with its HP being 110. It also has um, 30 speed, which is obviously really slow, and a base set total of 490. Um, the defenses are pretty okay. Um, they could be a little bit higher, but there's a big reason why, and I'll explain why. So the reason Reuniclus makes its way onto the list is that it actually has access to probably one of the best moves that we are seeing teams build around, and that's going to be um, Expanding Force, or better known as Psy Spam. So for those who hate Psy Spam, it's back. There's also not too many Psy Spam users. There was, there was a few good ones in um, the bigger regulations with restricted Pokemon, but now that we are reduced out of those restricted Pokemon, only the Pokemon that have access to Expanding Force are really going to start seeing um, a majority play. And Reuniclus is fortunate, fortunately one of those Pokemon that is able to access um, Psy Spam or access Expanding Force well. Um, in its move polls and ability strategies, we see why Reuniclus is also a very interesting Pokemon. It actually has a variety of ways you can use it, which is something I did not expect until I started researching into this Pokemon. Um, the Psy Spam is obviously a mandatory, I think, on this Pokemon because it just gives it a little bit more protection from, like, say, um, fake outs and also allows that expanding force to do more damage. Additionally, it has good support moves and it actually has a stalling strategy if you want to use it, which I did not know until I started researching it. Um, on these different teams, because of its different abilities, it's allowing itself to kind of mish into different ones. So I mentioned before, like Sand, um, Reuniclus actually has three good abilities, which is rare. Some Pokemon just don't have good abilities at all. 
Um, Reuniclus has a very good ability in Overcoat, which allows it to not take damage from the Sandstorm, as well as prevent it from being hit by, like, powders and stuff. So, effectively, Reuniclus can be on Sand teams, allowing itself to be under, say, like, a Trick Room or being under Expanding Force in the Sand to do massive damage while the Sand also picks up additional damage on the opponent. Reuniclus can avoid the Sand damage and just start doing more damage to the opponent. Additionally, Trick Room is obvious here because it's so slow. Um, it also can use Trick Room itself, and um, it does have access to some weather moves, so it's able to do weather-related shenanigans as well, and it does give itself those credence with, like, um, Trick Room. Um, additionally, obviously, Expanding Force and just being able to amount, amount, do amounts of damage that are crazy because of its high special attack is almost a given because of that 125 attack. It's nothing to scoff at, and if you prepare Reuniclus correctly, it can do that. Also, the Stalling Men... Stalling Men I wanted to bring up is the fact that Reuniclus actually has access to Regenerator as well. So if you build an extremely bulky Reuniclus, you in theory can um, do this with its move set, and I'll explain in a second. But effectively, you're able to just run some really good moves. Expanding Force is a must of. Then this is where I say the split becomes because you have Regenerator, you can use moves that vary. So instead of Recover, which I think is more on the Overcoat versions, you can use Pain Split on Regenerator based um, Reuniclises. So what they could do is if they take damage, they'll do the Pain Split on the opponent to level out the HP stat. Then when you feel like it, you could switch out Reuniclus into something else to gain back the remaining health to bring it back to full. Effectively, Reuniclus will just keep coming in and out out to do damage take damage re-establish its health bounce back in by switching it out and allowing other pokemon to take the field this allows reuniclus to kind of just stick around far longer than it needs to and in vgc switching is like a mandatory to understand for pivoting um additionally you have shadow ball as a coverage move i only have this here because it allows it to pick off other um different like ghost types it has a good neutral damage into other pokemon and allows a 125 base like special attack to do a lot of damage um, with like a move that can lower special defense as well in Shadow Ball. So it's just really good to have that move available. For its final slot, you can literally do a lot of different moves. You have um, Thunder Wave as an instance for maybe disruption. You have Protect to keep itself a bit more safe if you want to just draw out a battle. Helping Hand as well, funny enough, because it can support other Pokemon. Reuniclus is just honestly a Pokemon I think will deserve more um, experimentation for people because I do think that the Pokemon is pretty solid and it has a really good move pull with really decent abilities. Looking about its matchups into other Pokemon, um, against all of them, I think in this main core, it's pretty decent. I think it's more of a 50-50. Um, it leans more so to being more in Incineroar's favor against Reuniclus based on the fact that it has access to um, knockoff as well as being able to be a dark type itself, so it immunes the expanding force. But when it comes to the other matchups, Reuniclus is only problem against Gyarados is that's really slow. And um, Waterfall flinches are a thing, so I'm not going to rule it out. But otherwise, Reuniclus can strike back against specifically Gyarados. Um, Rillaboom is very similar where it can do decent damage into a neutral um, type of damage unless it's spe specifically packing like U-Turn or Knockoff, which can do damage into Reuniclus. But if Reuniclus is like not overcoat and it's Regenerator, it can not you know hate being hit by these moves it can take advantage of it by using pain split and then returning back by a switch so you know you have to kind of focus around reuniclus that way i think this pokemon's going to take a little bit more time to get going than the other rogue picks because people need to experiment with it but i do like it <clears throat> but also besides that if you like this video remember to like subscribe and let me know what you think because if you made it this far it shows that you care or you care enough to listen and it keeps me making content you guys love now, without further ado, let's get into our last Pokemon here. We have Kingdra. I have Kingdra as the last rogue pick because I never really cared for this Pokemon because I've never really seen it. But after I read its stats, its move pull, and really did some research into it, I became a believer that Kingdra might be a very good Pokemon that people aren't going to utilize. Now, when you look at its stats, it's kind of strange because Kingdra has very balanced stats for the most part. And I, I literally mean that. Like, every stat is kind of within a differential of about 10 or at the most 20 from each other and you know usually that's not like the case usually stats are kind of distributed by having somewhat bigger margins than that but all of Kingdra's stats are kind of like designed to be balanced so uh, that's a very interesting thing there but when we look at what Kingdra offers to different teams it's actually rather surprising so first Kingdra offers many different things that it can do first it's also a very good sweeper 
in terms of that aspect because it has an interest two interesting abilities and a, and a move pull that really does help it with that it has good coverage in its actual typing so being a water dragon does allow it to cover for a lot of different weaknesses and take neutral damage from stuff like grass but then ultimately in its final thing it has extremely good coverage moves against other pokemon that would damage it and i'll talk about it in a second but i'm telling you it has strong um coverage moves now we look at specifically one of its best abilities and the best reason Kingdra I think is a sweeper is of Swift Swim. So Swift Swim allows it to double its speed in the rain. And I think personally, this is where Kingdra will shine. Rain is like a almost guaranteed weather to be seen in Regulation H. And I do think it's arguably the best weather related um, ability in um, Pokemon at the moment. Um, specifically for Regulation H, the reason it's so good is so many different Pokemon don't care about the rain, but can use rain to punish other weather-based teams. And then there's a lot of Pokemon that love to use their moves under the rain or something like Archaladon that has its good special attacking move necessary for a full charge in the rain. So this enables um, some really powerful Pokemon to dominate the format. But Swift Swim is an ability that on Kingdra can allow it to basically be either on these teams or allow it to play into these teams. So also looking at what I said before, it can function as a sweeper it has the coverage moves to deal with other threats but more importantly it has extremely strong stab moves on both the physical and special split that allows it to kind of do whatever you want it to be i think that's another thing that kingdra is really good at with the stats that some people don't like is that kingdra can be whatever you want it to be you want it to be physical you train it to be physical you want it to be special you give it the special attack investment and kingdra is able to do anything you want it to Looking at the move pull, you'll see why. So it has access to the strongest physical water move in Wave Crash. And in Special Split, you have something like Scald, which although isn't the highest base stat total special move, does have the chance to burn and allow Special Kingdra an additional um, tool to use against other match matchups. When we look at something like the support moves as well as setup moves, you have Leer, which people might laugh at, but in the case of the modern metagame, um, Kingdra in the rain with Leer can also set up for a lot of Pokemon, allowing them to kind of do physical damage by reducing the stats of other Pokemon by one. Dropping that defense allows the other Pokemon to just do more damage. Yawn is also a good support move because a very fast Yawn means that the opponent may not have time to think about um, what they want to do because maybe they go for a setup move and now the pokemon get hit with yawn they don't want it to fall asleep but then they have to switch so it gives kingdra some credence there to allow it to play harder against other matchups also when we look at these moves there's just really good like moves here so breaking swipe scale shot these are all physical moves but dragon type so it's you know within the stab range we also have like special moves like hurricane and draco meteor which um kingdra can utilize and with terrestrialization um i think terra flying hurricane in the rain is just really insane on a swift swim on that just sounds like a lot of damage um moving into also some of the other coverage moves you have ice beam you have flash cannon you also have iron head as well for the physical kingdras you have surf you have icy wind if you start to realize what i'm doing kingdra just has a lot of good offensive moves that allow it to take advantage of the rain the best i think the main focus of kingdra is to be in the rain with all these different moves and basically support the team but also uh, becoming a main force of aggression against the opponent because i think a terrifying hurricane is just really bad to take on a uh, take from a special kingdra so it's just really strong looking at something like its matchups into the metagame i think it's usually split down the middle so the biggest reason i think kindra actually isn't um in the position to be like 100 percent on any of these matchups is the fact that depending on how you want to train it will depend on how it does special kindra i think does the best in my opinion for a few reasons in the regulation h because there's going to be a lot of incineroar we expect a lot of like intimidates we expect hisuian arcanine to be in the metagame which will intimidate gyarados will have intimidate lots of intimidate pokemon even something like salamance they all have intimidate right so if they all have intimidate it's like well why am i mentioning this as a main focus well physical kingdra has great moves but it's going to have to suffer from the presence of all these intimidators in the metagame as well as pokemon with high defenses so physical kingdra in my opinion um has a problem because it's usually going to be terra water taking advantage of the really strong water moves it has this also loses hard into like gastrodon and even into sun teams to a degree where it's going to lose its speed so you also have to maintain the fact you need the rain all the time and that's a problem sometimes when you have other teams with different compositions Additionally, we have Pokemon like Incineroar and Rillaboom that are able to fake out Kingdra, so that is a problem. I think Incineroar actually has a problem slightly with Kingdra only because it doesn't have coverage moves for Kingdra's um, moves. So 
a Kingdra should be able to take out an Incineroar as long as um, you have like certain factors going for you. Additionally, um, Rillaboom's biggest advantage against specifically, I think, Kingdra is that if the Kingdra doesn't have um, too much defense investment, it's just going to take a good amount of damage from the physical attacks. But Kingdra's best advantage is the fact that it has a good access to um, different moves to cover. Like I said, Terra Flying Hurricane, I think, is the best way to cover for Rillaboom. But yeah, that's pretty much what I have for my rogue picks. I have some honorable mentions here, so I'll talk about them now. Let's move into all the other additional Swift Swimmers I think are on the list, as well as some Pokemon I didn't want to mention in the video because I think they will be mentioned already in the metagame. So looking at specifically Beriscuta, Beriscuta is a fantastic Swift Swimmer. It has massive attack, massive speed, and it hits like a truck. The biggest reason I didn't bring it on the video, even though with its coverage moves, is what I think is the problem with Beriscuta. It dies and lives with the rain. The rain's gone, it doesn't do anything. And when the rain is up, it's going to be a threat. But Beriscuta has a problem against other matchup Pokemon. Like Rillaboom can just easily deal with, uh, you know, Beriscuta with a um, Grassy Glide, which will have priority with um, Grassy Surge. So you have to be problematic with um, Beriscuta. We look at something like Overquill. Overquill is a fantastic Pokemon and one of only two um, non-water Pokemon that has Swift Swim. So I didn't bother mentioning Overquill because I think this Pokemon is already going to see play in the metagame. I do think one of its biggest problems, though, is that it's just not as good without fairy types around. And it does do a lot of damage, but I just think the Overquill will be overshadowed by some of the other Pokemon in the metagame. And that is its only issue. Otherwise, I think Overquill is a fantastic Pokemon to use and people should be giving it a shot. We look at um, basically Float Soul represents all the other different like water types as well that have Swift Swim. So Swift Swim is an interesting ability on a lot of Pokemon, specifically for Float Soul. Its best strength is that you see that a lot of Pokemon actually have a great way to kind of battle into the format because they have really high speed and they really have good attack and they're able to play really well under rain. Like basically Bear Scuda and Float Soul are very similar, but Float Soul can represent something like Poliwrath and other Pokemon that just have access to Swift Swim that are really good, but also um, maybe not seeing play on teams. So you can give them a shot and see if you like them. Maybe you'll find some goo there. We talk about the sand rushers. So the main sand rushers I'm talking about is Lycan Rock and Excadrill. I did not put them on this list because I'm actually going to do a video focused around sand in the future. So obviously they're going to be focused, but pretty much um, I think these Pokemon are already going to be guaranteed to see some play in the metagame with sand because they are the best sand rushers you have access to. Excadrill obviously being a physical monster and Lycan Rock just being absolutely a little bit faster than the Excadrill, but able to dish out lots of damage with different moves. So both of those Pokemon are options. And finally, my last honorable mention pokemon i have here i think is scissor so scissor here is a great pokemon but i think the problem scissor has is that power creep has kind of made it somewhat irrelevant right now i think one of the benefits that scissor has is that it's a very interesting pokemon with priority move like a bullet punch the problem is even with technician i think the issue that scissor stems from is that a lot of pokemon can either deal with it they're not afraid of it because it's usually a physical attacker almost 100 percent of the time and you really don't have good coverage against certain matchups to really punish them yes um scissor got access to something like close combat this generation which was cool but i still think scissor's biggest problem is that it's unable to really dish out the amount of damage it wants to against other pokemon so it's just unable to really support your team now i think if they gave this pokemon maybe some more support moves to allow it to kind of set up something for your team or maybe even like quiver dance to get this thing going there might have been a chance for scissor to be good but I think in Regulation H, you can play with Scizor. I just don't know exactly how good it would be. So it really depends on what you train it to do against other teams. But that's all I've got for you guys today. I really hope you do like my first um, Regulation H video. I will be making at least one more Regulation H video, seeing how it does, and pretty much trying to do some more VGC content because I do like Pokemon VGC. It's not really something I was doing a lot i always played it for fun and i decided well why not do some content around it to kind of introduce the um channel to some more stuff but that's all i've got for you guys today and as always this has been brad from the ad army signing off and for all of you out there to sign on